Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Taylor. I'm Blanca, and today is Wicked, Wicked Wine, Wine Wednesdays, Wednesdays, where we talk about true crime and sample wines. Today we'll be discussing the Armin Maivis case, the German cannibal. So if you like wine and true crime, don't, don't forget, forget to, to like, like, comment, and, and subscribe. So before we dive in, I want to remind you guys that the wine that we tried will come at the end of the video, so if you're interested in that, stay tuned until then. I also want to put it out there that we will be posting every other Wednesday, so let's dive in. So this case has to do with a man named Armin Mivis, and he was a cannibal. And we're going to touch a little bit on his childhood and basically his upbringing and what he went through as a child. So he was born on December 1st, 1961, which makes him a Sagittarius. Um, he was born in Essen, Germany, and he had what people would say a lonely childhood. His father left him when he was around eight, which made him be raised by his mother, who had very dominant ways with him. He, she was pretty controlling about things that he did. She loved him a lot, but she showed it in different ways, more so of like keeping him contained and in her control. He ended up being an introvert, I'm sure, which stemmed from his mom's controlling ways. And he didn't have many friends. He wanted them, but he didn't have them. He ended up creating a little brother for himself that he called Frank. And he would talk to Frank and vent his feelings to Frank and talk about his desires and fantasies. He also enjoyed reading the book Hansel and Gretel, which is a book about a cannibalistic witch, if you haven't read that book. So I'm sure that didn't help with his fantasies and thoughts that he was having. He, When he was about a teenager, he started having fantasies about eating his friends, and he said that he wanted to eat them so they could always be with him, be inside of him, which is kind of sweet, but weird. <laughs> it's so gross. Uh, his mother didn't know that he had these fantasies. If she did, like, what would you do, you know? But, I mean, what, there was, like, shock therapy at that point back then? I don't know if that would have worked. Yeah. But uh, she never really let him lead the life that he wanted to live. It's just part of her control, I guess. Uh, he lived in a mansion, a massive mansion. I think it was around 11 rooms, and it was all with just his mother. His siblings had moved away, and his mom wanted to fill the house with friends, family, guests, and that just didn't really happen. He started working for the army for a little bit, and he later started working as a computer technician. Due to his mom's controlling ways, he was never able to make friends. So when the internet became a thing, he decided that's how he was going to make his friends, which I'm sure a lot of people did. But he turned it into a way of going onto like pornographic sites and reading into these cannibalistic forums and he got a lot of his fantasies and everything like that out into the open. He uh, had a lot of relations with the army men and he also had relations with gay prostitutes he says that he was bisexual, but he mostly had relations with men. Um, his cannibalistic tendencies started to take shape in 1999 after his mother passed. His mother's passing wasn't great for him, and he didn't take it very lightly. So he ended up um, looking for a man who was willing to be slaughtered and eaten, and he did this on a cannibal forum um, where cannibals or people who 
fantasized about eating people all met on this forum. Yeah, well, I guess people that would fantasize about being eaten would be on there too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why you would fantasize about that, but I mean, I mean that's how he he posted about wanting to find somebody like that, and obviously somebody answered that. After his mom dies, things just really aren't too good for him because now he kind of sees it as, well, mother's not around, so what can I get away with? At this point, he decides to remodel their entire mansion so that he can hold technician seminars and so that people can feel safe and sound in his home. What obviously people didn't know was in the midst of his construction, he decided to build himself a room upstairs known as the slaughter room. Now, obviously, it had torture creations in there. Um, I'm pretty sure anything you could probably think of, yeah. I'm sure it was in there. Yeah. A giant cage that was in there where he would, you know, film his victims. Now, the victims that he was getting, he was basically going back onto that, like, cannibalism forum. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he when he was on the forum, he was posting under a fake name. And the fake name was Frankie, which as we learned earlier, is his imaginary brother. So it's just kind of like Little identity taking over, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, so he goes onto the forum. He basically just kind of asks anybody that's willing to participate to come and play. He has a few people come over. He would just draw, like, you know, like with a Sharpie or something, just where he would cut them or where he would eat them. He would, you know, have them dragged up by their feet on a pulley, you know, just things like that. But everyone everyone would go home safe and sound, no matter what. He always said that no matter what, he never, um, you know, would go too far with people. If they didn't want to do something, obviously they would stop and the victims can go home. It wasn't, you know, I'm going to keep you hostage and yeah. keep doing things. It was just... I want this. If you don't want to continue, we'll stop. Which, honestly, nice guy, if yeah. you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> At least he's getting consent. Yeah, I mean, for sure. So, after this, he kind of really decides that he does want somebody that is going to be willing, very, very willing to go through with this to the whole extent. At this point, he goes back onto the forum and he, you know, posts basically asking for anybody to be a willing victim, you know, to be murdered and also eaten. Eventually, many people did respond to this post. However, many eventually developed their cold feet and were unable to go through with it. He then eventually started emailing back and forth with a man named Burned Brandis. Now, Burned was more than happy to be the willing victim here. Apparently, he himself had an unhappy childhood, um, and it got to the point where he just, I guess, didn't really care, and, you know, he himself was a bisexual. It was a fantasy of his as well, and they decided to, you know, make a date, a time, and a whole plan to carry this out. Now, on March 9th of 2001, Burned goes over to Armin's mansion, and at this point, everything is completely on camera. Everything is recorded. Burned gives Armin full consent to go through with this, and um, before they really kind of do anything, it said that Burned had taken about 20 sleeping pills along with some cough syrup, which kind of, you know, eventually started slowing down his breathing. But in the acts of everything, Armin does mutilate his penis and they do attempt to both eat it together. However, because of the condition that Burned was in with all of the drugs in his system, he was unable to really fully, like, I guess, consume it. Consume it. Um, at this point, Armin then goes and gives him a bath, prays for him, and then stabs him in the throat, killing him. Now, this is all done in a sexual pleasure, I guess. I'm, again, not my thing, but you know. 
to each their own. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, this is just their thing. At this point, um, he does kind of put the body up on a meat hook after and, you know, chop it up, do your little thing. Yes, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's not funny. It's not funny. I'm sorry. It's not, but it's crazy. But he, so he chopped it up. He stored it in a freezer. He ate pieces of him for over 10 months. Basically consumed almost his whole body while the outside outside world is just completely like unaware of this. Mm -hmm. Burned was actually in a relationship and his boyfriend was like, what happened to my boyfriend? Mm -hmm. You know, kind of what was happening on that end. And in the meantime, no one knows that he like willingly like let <laughs> himself be murdered on camera and all this. After consuming most of Burns' body, Armin decided that he needed another victim. So he posted on the forum again in 2002, asking if somebody else would be willing to come to his house and basically participate in the same act that Burns did. A student ended up seeing his post, which I'm wondering, what are you doing there anyway, but whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, what? Okay, what were you looking for? <laughs> but anyway, so he sees the post and he ends up reporting it to the police. And so the investigators come into Armin's house and do their investigation and they end up finding videotapes and everything and the body parts and just everything that took place. Uh, he ends up being arrested and convicted of manslaughter on January 30th of 2004. Um, Marvis did confess to it. He says, yeah, I, this is all that took place. Yeah, I killed him, but he was willing. Um, he was sentenced to eight years, and after his arrest, uh, Marvis expressed guilt and regret for his actions, and he wanted a biography to come out about him in order to discourage anybody who, else who is willing to follow in his footsteps. In 2005, um, German, the German court retrialed his whole case and they decided that he was going to be put in for life and charged with murder. Um, a psychologist had stated that Mivis was dangerous and that he still dreamt of devouring flesh of humans. In May of 2006, he was sentenced to life and charged with murder. And it kind of comes down to the question of should he have been sentenced to life? You know, like his victim was willing, but I don't know. It's it's a tough one. It's a tough one. It's weird because I get where it's it's wrong on so many levels. Mm -hmm. So many levels. But again, he gave consent mm -hmm. and that's just... Yeah. But and I, like I know to... he said that I said that he, you know, he was like on, you know, all those drugs and stuff like that. But you have to realize like... He went there. There was hours of them talking about the entire act, the plan, and everything that they were planning on doing mm -hmm. prior to him even taking any of those drugs and medications. So, like, he w he willingly went there. Mm -hmm. He willingly knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And unlike all our other victims, he was willingly okay to die. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing is, like, he had other people that came in and that he didn't do anything with. So, exactly. like, that begs the question of, like, if somebody, I guess if somebody was willing again, he would kill them, which is not okay. But, but. like, he didn't do anything to anybody else that came. There was a bunch of people that he had done these foreplay acts with and he let them go because they didn't want to do what he wanted them to do which is fine he let them go i guess their maybe worry would be what if there was not enough people willingly 
to satisfy his craving and yeah, for yeah. it to happen. Then and he then start he doing. started to get too yeah. violent with people and then now he would have more victims. Yeah. Maybe that's where I can see it. Yeah. But again, not that we're promoting, you know, cannibalism or anything. Yeah. Actually, fun fact, cannibalism is not illegal. Did you know that? In California? In anywhere. Oh. Cannibalism is not illegal. It's only illegal to kill people. Which is why he got charged with murder, not cannibalism. Isn't that crazy? Because it's supposed to be um, for, like, survivor things. Like, if, say, you and I oh, were on a mountain. and I died, and yeah, you, and like, you. sliced me up. Okay. And I ate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, say that, like, I decided to eat you to survive. <laughs> it wouldn't be illegal for me to do that. Oh, okay. But, That's, Yeah. And sure, <laughs> I'd like to say that he did state to the cops um, his whole act about how he went about killing or how he went about eating um, burns. And he talks about how he like served it with like veggies and stuff and like wine and that he. Oh, so he made like home cooked meals. With yeah, this. he made a whole meal for himself out of this guy and he told uh investigators that it tasted very similar to pork and that he enjoyed it um so i mean he almost got like a full year's worth off of one man so yeah that's insane i guess if you just killed one person every year (laughs) (laughs) no no again not that he should but like I guess if you were just trying to, like, satisfy, like, that cannibalism craving and, like, Yeah, but I also think the whole sexual act is a big thing, too, you know? Because he still wants to have that sexual act with somebody. But, I mean... But if you have all those other people in the meantime that you can, like, do the foreplay with that aren't overly willing, and then you have the one willing person a year... Again, I'm not. (laughs) I think the wine might have hit me a little because I'm trying to rationalize this. Again, not okay. All wrong on every level. But the way that I see it, it's just, again, it's so hard to really say, like, that this is so wrong because Mm -hmm. the person was just, they gave consent. Like, they allowed it to happen. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Like, I don't think anybody that... I mean, it's, it goes to say, you know, you can't kill some... Like, if somebody wants to commit suicide and they say, oh, like, if I come to you and I'm like, hey, I can't kill myself, can you shoot me in the head? Like, you can't do that. Well, obviously. You know? Yeah. So it's like, I guess it, it makes sense. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I don't know. I feel like the eight years <laughs> would have been fine. But, I mean, he could have gotten out in eight years and then done the same thing. But... I mean, it goes to say that uh, Mavis says that, like, when they did the whole trying to basically get his defense back and get him out, he said he didn't want to be released. And I think he it's because he's well aware that he will do it again. Uh, and I don't think that it's okay to continue killing people because yeah. I mean, obviously he would turn into a serial killer. Yeah. But I don't know. It still begs the question is if he should have been convicted on how he was convicted. Yeah. Do you think the eight years was enough, or do you really think the life is the best? But again, I do see where the retrial could have happened, and if he wasn't willing to release himself, I'm wondering if he himself yeah, was having the worry that, like, yeah, the foreplay I mean, play itself wouldn't end up being enough. Yeah, and then like, it would get to I mean, the point. I'm sure there's like like serial killers. You know, they always say when they when they start killing, like they do things like methodically, mm-hmm. and then when they've gotten so comfortable, they just get sloppy and they're just, like, killing people left and right because it's that joy of it. Yeah. So, like, I wonder if he already knows that if he would have got out, he would have had this type of rush to just continue killing people, even people that weren't willing, you know? Yeah. Crazy. Either way. I I mean... Don't kill people. (laughs) Yeah. I don't support cannibalism, but I guess if it's, like, he... (laughs) You're on the top of a mountain. <laughs> You're on the top of the mountain, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you have to get, eat somebody to survive, then I guess, like, it's okay. But, um... I just think of uh, the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the Johnny Depp one, when he's like, cannibalism is frowned upon. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? But, yeah, I know what you mean. But, um... Yeah, I mean, there's a whole documentary about him, and it goes into detail about what he did. 
it's kind of hard to get go into detail here because there's so much there's so much about everything you know about how he went about eating him how he cut him like there's all of that all of that's out there and it's it's crazy because this this case is heavier or weirder i feel like it's just weirder more than anything yeah like it's pretty dark but at the same time it's a little bit lighter because it's not somebody just that lost their life like yeah i'm i guess he still lost his life yeah but it's not not, we're saying he didn't it's not somebody who didn't expect to lose their life you know it the it's still sad because to think of what was in this man's head burns like what was going through his head to want to end his life it's it's sad, you know? He obviously probably wasn't in the right state of mind. Neither of these men were. Um, and, yeah, the whole the whole case is just off, to say the least. So off. But to end this video on a little bit more of a positive note, we're going to talk about the wines that we tried and let you know what we think. So the wine that I tried, I'm not sure if we've had this on our show before, but if so, I have it again. And it's 19 Crimes. Is it in focus? No, it is. Okay. It's 19 Crimes, and it's a Cabernet, of course. Fun fact, I had actually gotten a Zinfandel for myself, (laughs) and her stepmom got the 19 Crimes for us to do on our show, but... It was a little too... It was too heavy. It was too Um, heavy for her. Between the two, Zinfandel was a lot sweeter. Yeah. And that one was just too heavy. Yeah. But it wasn't bad. It was just too heavy. So, um, it's more on the bold side than the light side. It's a bit more tannic than smooth. And it's more on the dry side than the sweet side, like most Cabernets. And it's somewhere between soft and acidic. I... Don't really get much acidity to it because oh, okay. I feel like it's pretty soft going down, but it could just be because I like it. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> it has taste notes of vanilla, oak, chocolate, blackberry, 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 <laughs> plum, uh, dark fruits, cherry, raspberry, and red fruits. And it pairs well with beef, lamb, and poultry because Cabernet is a great dinner wine. Uh, we had ours with pizza, but same thing, you know? I mean, hey. And there was some meat in there. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> and yeah, I think it's pretty good. Overall, a great wine. I would drink it again. <laughs> it's too strong for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, as mentioned earlier, the wine that I tried is the Ravenwoods Zinfandel. It is a California wine shocking Mm -hmm. (laughs) it is all the way on the bold side which i definitely do get that taste that like bolder yeah yeah i definitely do it's more on the smoother side which i agree on because between that cab and this one a lot smoother (laughs) (laughs) it says it's more on the drier side but i felt like it was a little bit sweeter and then it says that it's more soft than acidic which i kind of agree with but let's see what else It also has some blackberry, plums, vanilla, oak, chocolate, cherry, raspberry, basically your basic red wine. This one pairs well with beef, lamb, and poultry because what red wine doesn't complete a great meat dinner? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Talking about eating people. I know. (laughs) Never mind. I'm sure he he had a red wine. (laughs) I wouldn't doubt it. I was trying to download the 19 Crimes app to show you guys the... Because when you hold up the app oh, to yeah. the the face on here, he actually talks. So let's see if I can get that really quick and I'll show you guys. Easter Monday, 1876. We made break for the ship Catalpa. We nearly sunk getting to her. But after two days, hands bloody from rowing, we boarded the Catalpa and escaped. Others, hero. But I, I call myself Michael Harrington, Fenian brother, and part of the Fremantle Six. The friendships we forge in the darkest hours of rebellion, transport, and imprisonment are the strongest. Our real brothers would never betray us. 
Thank you everybody for watching and we can't wait to see you next next Wednesday. Bye!